Mums and dads of Great Britain. For years you've worked your fingers to the bone. You've cooked, you've cleaned, you've washed and ironed. You've paid for your little treasures to live in comfort and joy. But for many parents, it's a never-ending story. Their kids are work-shy, demanding and downright ungrateful sponges. Can I ask for something to no, eat? I don't like beans, you know I don't. You do like beans. No, get me spaghetti. Why do I need to work when my mum pays for everything? They depress me jobs, they depress me. I'm not a massive fan of responsibility. I don't want to move out yet because I'd rather spend my money on clothes. The painful truth is that these parents only have themselves to blame. If she wants something now, she she can have it. I can't be strict on anything, with anything, with anyone. My mum's like a doormat. You can literally walk all over it. Their kids are getting away with murder. I'm ready to be picked up. I should really have a peak cap with the word taxi written across it, or maybe mug. Now these long-suffering parents have finally acknowledged enough is enough, and it's time to take drastic action. I think all 25-year-olds should be far away from home. It's pushed me to the brink. He needs to learn, obviously, to look after himself. He's got to. I've been almost suicidal or sometimes. They're kicking eight of the worst offending overgrown children out of home. There's the big wide word, go out and sort it out. Having never lived independently or held down a proper job before, each week they will be challenged in the workplace by their parents. <laughs> I've got wet feet. I'm not catching new more on you for this. There's a Johnny in the bed. That's disgusting. To see if they can cut it in the real world as adults. Oh, and someone's took a runny poo. Oh. <laughs> With this bunch of layabouts, it's easier said than done. Will they be able to stand on their own two feet for the first time? I'm Miss Matty and then I'm Miss Tucker. If I ever thought I'd be in this situation, I'd never signed up. Will their parents' shock tactics be enough to finally bring their children kicking and screaming into adulthood? I'm not with myself! You're nothing. You're a dirty oh. animal. Why am I so stressed? Don't push it. Seriously, grow up! Yeah, grow up. Oh. Or are they forever destined to remain young, dumb and living off mum? For the next four weeks, these eight brats will be forced to live side by side in this house in an attempt to gain independence. For the first time ever on a limited budget and with minimal resources, it's time to experience real life. So let's meet them. 18-year-old tantrum queen Danielle has never lifted a finger to help her mum, Lynn. I think I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch and I love it. But actually, I do know her true personality, and she's got a heart of gold. No, I don't want it. You asked for something to eat. No, I don't like beans. You know I don't. Sean, 19, lives with Gran Esther. She's waited on him hand and foot since he was a baby. Sean, tea. I don't have to do a great deal for myself. That's true. Sean, do you want cheese? No, I'm not in the mood for exotic today. Black and red pepper, please. I've got it ready. Being quite honest, I can't see myself ever ironing, cooking, and making a drink. Give me a t-shirt and I'll take them down. I live a very cushy lifestyle. Cushy is definitely the word for it. 25-year-old playboy Jay blows his parents' cash on his rock star lifestyle. On an average night out, there's a lot of money being spent. I mean, like, think of a figure and double it. If I couldn't decide between what ones to buy, I'd normally buy all of them. When he needs money, <laughs> then he remembers mother. I mean, my parents are my biggest fans. 18-year-old university dropout Rachel lives in a privileged bubble of her parents' making. I like living at home because my parents give me everything I could ever want and I'm happy. If I didn't sort of go into a room and tidy it up, I would have this smell lingering. Please, just go, just leave, just leave the room. Yeah! Woo! I haven't got a job and I don't care. I'm happy. She's extremely intelligent, she's damn good looking. From my perspective, job done. I want to be up there. I just want to be up there. 24-year-old layabout Orion is so proud of his flat which his parents finance, the only time he leaves it is to party away his mum's cash. He needs to get a job. He needs to have a purpose in life and not just going out socialising. I mean, because I go out partying all the time, it's just a bit difficult to get a job in, really. It's like having a job in itself, though. I think he needs now to move on and maybe get away from the apron strings a bit. If she disappeared now, 
Well, who's going to pay the mortgage? <laughs> 25-year-old work-shy Nikki refuses to get a job and prefers life served on a plate. Well, I think it's my mum's fault that I'm still living at home because she gives me everything I want. I like to give her things. I can't eat beef curry! I can't believe she made me beef curry. She knows I hate beef curry. She's like my best friend. And a bank manager. And everything <laughs> else. <laughs> I'm, I'm not eating it. I'm a tripod. I'm not eating it. I hate working. It's not good. Nine to five, out the window, I don't like it. Just because the world works to get what they want. I work hard at getting the money out of my mum. That's my job. <laughs> Dina is 17 and lives with Dad, Darren, who she has wrapped around her little finger. I don't want to move out yet because I'd rather spend my money on clothes and going out and get my nails done. Dina tends to only wear clothes or new outfits once or twice. What do you think? She has had dresses that have been getting on for 800 or 900 pounds for me, easy like you know, so. It's not really like a father-daughter relationship. It's more like two best friends that live together. He's a crap dad, but a good best friend. I think I boss around more. <laughs> and finally, heir to a nightclub empire, Doan lives a champagne lifestyle at his parents' expense. I could imagine people come and live in my life it's, it's like a dream. He's had everything that he wants when he's wanted it. Some people look at it as spoiling the kids, but it's not spoiling, it's just giving their kids what they, what they want. It's day one of four weeks of communal living for the group and time to meet their new housemates. So that's eight pampered people under one roof who've barely lifted a finger in their entire lives, let alone cooked, washed, or cleaned for themselves. Did you bring your stuff? Yeah, I need to get my yeah. stuff as well. Thank you. It looks like old fashioned and cold. I'm sure my room's haunted. You're a bit hot in here, Sean. Sure. I'm stuck. You should have instructions. Look, I'd make my bed. I'll make my bed. Whoa, with all that backbreaking work over, it's time for dinner, which certainly isn't going to make itself. So it's time for a rare outing to the local supermarket. And when you're living on a limited budget for the first time ever, best to stick to the essentials. No, I thought it was going to miss important things. I got a bottle of wine and that just to start. I don't know if people like wine, but I got them that. Yeah, I've got yogurts, um, rice pudding. Water. I'm getting a plug in to make my room smell nice. What I've done is I bought two bottles of port. Anyone like to join me drinking port they can? If they won't, that means I've got enough port to last me a whole week. So that's a well balanced diet of eight yogurts, two bottles of wine, a bottle of vodka, and two bottles of port. Not forgetting that thing that makes Dina's room smell like roses. Thank you. Back from their epic outing to the corner shop, Tantrum Queen Danielle's already feeling the strain of life without her live in slave, her mum. It was absolutely horrible, and I'm really tired, and I feel ill now. It's really stressful, and I don't know how my mum does it. And for spendaholic Orion, shopping on a weekly budget of £85 has been a shock to the system. Oh, having to, like, go into a shop, I mean, I would just spend £85 in one, in one go, so it's, it's, it's just having to go into a shop and then buying, buying the cheapest wine and stuff, at like £2.50. But at least Orion's better equipped than some to cope with the basics. 18-year-old Danielle has never cooked for herself, ever. But even for the most hardened layabout, surely heating up a can of beans shouldn't be that difficult, should it? You get a pan, make sure your pan's clean. That is clean, that's just a water mark. Okay. It's like each one of these with the black one. So that one is that one. That one, you see the dot, is that one. And you press it down. So do it for me. Twist, press down, and twist. Twist, no, twist. Right, it's done. No, no, back again. Mm -hmm. So you've got a bit more heat. Mm -hmm. Put the pan on there. Give me a fork. And then in about three minutes, it'll be piping hot. Um, like Somebody call Mensa. I think we've got a new member. Stupid shower. But it's not just Danielle struggling with the basics. It's not long before Daddy's girl, Dina, is faced with the next obstacle. We've run out of hot water, Sean. How is that possible? I don't even know. Hot water, it lives forever. What? I 
<laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> this forever. You are cold in. Well, I can't go in the bath upstairs or something. But it's cold as well. The water's freezing. What, upstairs? I don't understand how hot water works then. Like, what makes it hot? <laughs> I just know there's a boiler because heat rises and all that. The but then again, we've got one in our airing. We've got like a water tank in our airing cabin that's upstairs. But should we go on a hunt for it later? <laughs> With no mummy or daddy to call on, the kids opt for a somewhat novel approach. Right, we need to find a house that looks like clever people live in it. Do you know where's a boiler in a house? Basically. Where, please? Where do you find a boiler in a house, please? We're kind of clueless. Kinda. Right, we live in a house, we're from number three, but our boiler's broken and we can't find it. So you wouldn't be able to tell us where the boiler is by any chance? Yeah, that's alright. Right, okay. Hello, we're doing a survey today. Where would you find a boiler? Do you know where a boiler might be? Meanwhile, Jay and Doan decide to use that rare commodity in this house, common sense, and head for the basement. So theoretically, should I have water? Is there a timer system? At least someone's got their head screwed on around here. Here we go. Turn it on constantly now. Apparently you fix the hot water. Is that hot water? Well, it's warm. It's getting there. Yeah, done. No and problem. apparently you said, how do you do it? Basically, all systems must run on a thermostat. And the thermostat will dictate how many times it comes on during the day, how long it's on for during did the day. Did you reset And how hot it is. No, I just, put it, I just put it on on. I can put it back on twice. I'm at Barack Obama. I'm moving forward. Yep, next stop, the human genome. Anyway, it's only been one day for this group of molly-coddled kids, and life without mum and dad is hitting home. I know it sounds sad, but I'm missing my mum doing things for me. And it's kind of... I, I found it a bit difficult having to actually think for myself, which I know I'll have to do. I hasn't, it hasn't really sunk in that I have to fend for myself yet, I don't think. Um, because I came down and I, th I was kind of waiting for something to happen, but then I realised that I have to make it happen or somebody else has to make it happen. Tomorrow morning, the group will undertake their first work challenge, and each week, the kid who proves themselves to be the most useless will be sent packing. The catch is, it's their very own parents who will be watching and deciding who should be eliminated. The parents are hoping their kids can cut it in the real world, and as an extra incentive, whichever kid is judged to have grown up the most will win the prize of a round-the-world trip. First up, it's the turn of Doan's mum, Dawn, to set the challenge. Dawn started work at 16 as a chambermaid and has decided that a day's work in a busy central London hotel will help fast-track the kids to adulthood. I'm hoping that all the kids, not just Doan, um, will appreciate, you know, the understanding of cleaning and actually working, earning their own money, instead of just taking, taking, taking. Not sure it's that simple, Dawn. Right, the cars will pick everyone up at 6 15. Oh my god! god. Oh, is no way! 6 15. 6 15 <laughs> morning or evening? 6 15 a.m. Oh my god! Oh my god. god. How the hell are we going to do our hair? She's having a giggle. <laughs> She's having a giggle. Alright, okay. Okay, so the car picks us up tomorrow at 6 15. Oh, God. Okay, so good luck, everyone, and bye for now. Cheers, Mum. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 So, for There's you, no to bed, that means you better go to bed now, love, because if you're getting up at 6.15, that means you get up, you get up at 3.00. I'm going to bed. <laughs> bit of an early start. Uh, it's usually the time I'm you probably go to bed at 6.15. Um, I'm just getting tired thinking about it. Oh, I'm dreading it, because I have to get up even... If we have to leave here at quarter past six, that means I'm going to have to get up about half four to start doing my hair. Tomorrow will be the group's first ever hard day's work in their lives, and showing some unexpected maturity, most of the house are off to sleep. Nikki and Rachel, on the other hand, haven't quite managed it and are still awake. She just got to bed at one somewhere. You know, we're trying to think she'll be able to have like half an hour's sleep, aren't we? 
But we don't think we're going to wake up if we do. If I stay up, then I'm not. I, I, I want to do the. I want to at least make the effort. You know what I mean? And go to the task or whatever. So I don't want to be like. I don't want to be like in bed the whole day. You know what I mean? I don't want to wake up at two o'clock or whatever and be like. It's ridiculous. It's all. These chambermaids in waiting finally nod off at 4.30, half an hour before they need to get up. Interesting preparation for your first ever day of working. It's 5 a.m. and all over the country, hotel workers are already up and out, but not this lot. Their day has barely started and diva Dina is already dragging her heels. You've got 45 minutes to get ready. I'll leave it here because I've got something to do. Oh, how am I going to get ready in four to five minutes? <laughs> You're joking! Piss off, you know. It's 7am and the group has been split between two hotels in central London for their first full day's hard graft. Dina, Rachel, Jay and Sean are in one hotel and Doan, Nikki, Orion and Danielle are in the other. With the parents watching everything that goes on tomorrow, Hi. it's a chance to finally make their parents proud. Hi, I'm the worst performing member of the group will be eliminated, so the pressure's on to impress. First things first, and it's time to look the part and get into uniform. Easier said than done when you've got three foot hair extensions to contend with. Uh, there's no way you can take this hair out. Is gonna, like, rip off. There's no way you can take this hair out. Girls, we don't really have a time. Yeah, we're running out of time. I'm sorry, this is the hotel. We're working here. Yeah, it's, right. we're coming, we're coming. I'll, I'll yeah, just get a hat. Right. I'll give you, I'll give you five minutes. Hat. Okay, yeah. I'll be back in five minutes. All right. Tonight, both groups must cater for two VIP parties. But before that, they have a 12 hour crash course in the hotel trade ahead of them. It's breakfast service in the cafe, and in this hotel, Nikki and Doan have been set loose on the unsuspecting public while Danielle and Orion are safely locked away in the kitchen. With half an hour's sleep under her belt, work shine Nikki's powers of concentration are already running on empty. Three number on there. Table three. I've just made, like, a mistake already. But which wasn't my fault, because I just got told to take it to the table. I only thought there was one person in there, so... Obviously. Give me time, I've been doing it five minutes. They can't expect me to know it all straight away. I'm not bloody a genius. Nope, no one's going to accuse you of that. It's no surprise that she's struggling. Work and Nikki have never been much of a match. All in all, I've had 23 jobs, and they've lasted like three days, sometimes a day, sometimes six hours. They depress my jobs, they depress me. They make me in tears. I don't like, I hate, I don't like working. Clean it up. I'm not. Clean it, Nikki. Just give me them. Would you not like to be able to to have your own place yeah, and that's, do your own thing? That and that is too much thinking, Mum. There's too many decisions. I'm not, I don't want. But to you wouldn't anything. have me there to nag you all the time. I'd rather have be nagged than work. Are you just lazy? <sighs> But it's not just Nikki having problems. Only 45 minutes into the job, and it's total chaos all round. No, no. <laughs> Kill Whoa! There's a sink over there. Quick, 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 quick. <laughs> well, who do I give these to, Jay? Put them on the table. On the table. Come on, it's only a chicken. I'm not strong enough. <laughs> if you've got any problems or queries. <laughs> Have you ever have you ever done eggs before? Anything like yeah, and you just smack them and then they crack. Whoa. <laughs> I've got two of the uh, smoking salmon bagel what and salmon uh, also can I bottle of seal water with limes and uh, ice, please. Limes and ice, what? Yeah, it's bottle of seal water. Seal water. Like seal water with seal water. some ice, please. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I forgot what he said. Was it a smoked salmon bagel? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Anyone's <coughs> seed water. A what? Seed water, he said. Seed water? Yeah, that's what he said. No. I asked him four times. It's seed water with the ice and lemon. Yes, that well-known drink, seed water. I would like to order a bottle of seed water, please. 
steel. Steel, steel water. So, yep, got it. Bye. I'm so stressed. Emotionally. And things are only about to get a whole lot worse. This is why I don't work. Because look at the state of me. I can't concentrate or anything. Meanwhile, in the other hotel, Nanny's boy Sean is already rewarding himself with a coffee break. I'm shattered. I'm so tired. You know, I, I'm finding my I'm finding my way around the kitchen. No, I'm not a psychic. I can't just be like, woo, I know my way around. He's up here. I can get that. I can get this. You know, I'm not magic woman. How did you find the kitchen? Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, my feet are aching. Oh God, you and your bloody feet. My back's hurting at the bottom too. Do you what? What do you, <laughs> you do at home? Nothing. And normally I just sit and watch telly or like in bed all my day. Breakfast is only a small part of the day and they're already knackered. Next up is housekeeping, the hardest job in the hotel. To impress the parents who will be judging their performance tomorrow, our first day jobbers need to start getting their hands dirty. Oh no. Once you finish this room, give me a shout, I'll come in and check it and then we're gonna move to another okay. one. Okay, right. we... Are we happy? Yeah. Do we have to change the sheet? Stains still on the toilet. That's all right. Put your toilet. And there's like, there's no toilet brush. No, no, no. Just put your toilet cleaner down and leave it to work. Okay. You're going to come back to it later. I feel like I'm over. I found condoms. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Ugh. Uh, that's like a machine. Oh, you're not seriously fucking like that. Well, I've got no What's choice, haven't you? Because you won't touch it. I wouldn't want to do this job because it's absolutely disgusting. To do this job, they would have to pay me two grand a week to do this job. And that would be pushing it. I would want benefits on top of that. Just f***ing cleaning my toilet. Someone else is Does someone have to iron them bed sheets? He's sent to the laundry. Do you like making beds? How many beds do you make a day? <sighs> She's like your slave. She's not. She's not a slave. I think that was the wrong word you used. No. Yes. I mean, no, yeah, I mean, yeah. She, like, just, like, I'll do it, I'll do it. With pressure building and only half an hour's sleep, Dina's total lack of respect for the other hotel workers pushes Rachel over the edge. <sighs> I just think she's respectful, what she says. <laughs> she, I'm not, I think, I don't think she realises it. I would never just be so rude and stuff. People who were trying their best. Oh, sorry about that. I just like, oh, it just caught me for a bit. And... Okay. All right. Right. Well, you need a cast. What's the matter? Just everything just got off me, and I just all been so intense recently, and that's why. And... So right, come on, let's make beds. Meanwhile, across London at the other hotel, Nikki's still trying to get her head round this messy business called work. I just don't know how people don't like to work in a hotel. It's beyond me. Hello. And finally, after her first four hours of really hard graft, the penny's beginning to drop. I think I don't understand the concept of hard work or a job. I, I didn't think jobs should be this difficult. I thought it was like a nine to five going, that was it. And that bored me. Now I didn't know how much skill is involved and how good you have to be at your job to keep your job. But it's still all a bit new for some. Hey, there's a Johnny in the bed, that's disgusting. <laughs> The room should normally take one person half an hour to make up. It takes the groups twice that time with two people. It's time for the hotel managers to inspect their handiwork. So, how, how did you get on? Um, I've 
We've checked our list. You've just done with the checklist. I think it looks good. Val? Yeah? Is this duvet on there? No, it's not very good, is it? It's not even tucked in. Right, um, your mirrors are very smeary. You didn't clean your kettle, but your tray, you filled it up as best you could. Not brilliant, but not too bad. Thank you. <coughs> right, that's it. Let's, let's go. Okay. Back in the other hotel, Orion and Doan haven't finished, but are convinced they're not to blame. Well, uh, we're kind of pretty much done after we've done the bed, because as um, the hotel um, has run out of um, toilet paper, I'm going to be stocking that up, and they've run out of... Flannels. Um, clean flannels. Clean flannels, so I won't be replacing them, so they can't have a go at me for that. And um, they've run out of the biscuits as well, full of teas. So it's a really good hotel. Definitely deserved the four star. <laughs> Um, Working for other people isn't something that nightclub heir Doan is accustomed to. He lives in Essex with his parents who made their millions in the nightclub and restaurant business. Doan lives the life of the big shot club owner, but without any of the hard work. His hard day's work in his life, um, let me think, five minutes. He hasn't seen anything hard yet, you know, he's still cuckoo land. I love the lifestyle I'm living at the minute. It's like being a kid in a candy shop. It's, um, it's about time he pulled his socks up and worked for what he, um, what he gets. But more than his lazy attitude to work, Doan has a more worrying side, his temper. He'll take it out on the furniture. He can throw things at his sister, anything really. Anything that comes in Doan's vision or reach when he's in a mood and take cover. It's brought Dawn to her wit's end. It's pushed me to the brink of an almost suicidal sometimes. Well, let's see how a room inspection by the manager goes down. I'm afraid the time is up. Cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can see the room is not ready. No, I don't think the hotel is either. So what's wrong? What, what made you... Well, you know, there was... ...being delayed? Um... Because it's the first time we've ever done this before in our lives. Okay. And um, also there was, there was some things which we didn't have, uh, which the hotels run out of. Like you've run out of toilet tissue, so I couldn't stock that up. And you've also run out of flannels, so I couldn't stock them up. Did you ask anyone? Yeah, yeah. I did. And what did they say? No. Nope. We've run out. You asked your staff, asked two or three of them, they said, you haven't got no toilet paper. Did you, did you ask the housekeeper, which is your direct boss? I've asked them, what am I meant to do? She says you haven't got them. The housekeeper told you we don't have a toilet paper? Yes. Do you want me to call her here? Yes. OK, I'll call her here. Yes, not the head chamber. of housekeeper. The, there's no other housekeeper, there's a chambermaid and a head. Uh, chambermaid, said mate. Well, I'm sorry. Misunderstanding. Well, you said the housekeeper. Yeah, well, it's a misunderstanding. You have to, you have to what? It's a misunderstanding. I meant this one. So we've don't never, try and... Don't try and was it, I'm not trying mate. to do anything. I well, said, I said... The, the I job, said the, don't shout at me. Well, You're my well, employee. You don't no, raise employee. a voice on me. Well, don't ra raise your voice on me, don't mate. Raise a voice. Don't, the do job you know, has yeah, to be done. You ain't a manager. Mate, you're the... Ma I have, a, whatever, I have experience. Mate. You have experience, I have yeah. education. What Not, do you have? Uh, what if I have? What do you yeah, have? Yeah, I've got common knowledge, mate. Oh, really? I've got, this is yeah, common yeah. sense, isn't it? Yeah. Which is a lack in your head. The whole point the whole is point. the job has to be done, and it has to be done into a certain level. Yeah. The job hasn't been done. With your yeah. attitude, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work for me, to be honest with you. You wouldn't work for me. Well, yeah, you wouldn't work if, for if my you, family. You would not work for my family have, business. If you're right? going to have your you company, you wouldn't work for my family. If you're going to have your company, yeah, see you later, call me. Bruv, later, Div. I don't know what's wrong with this boy. You know, taking such a criticism that you know the hotel is filthy, or the the manager is not really a manager, or someone's father wouldn't employ me because of whatever reason, well, I'm sorry, you know, this is not the way to you talking to your employer. I'm sorry. These are my employees today. I don't have respect for that Adrian, because I don't think he should, he deserves the role as being a manager. No, I, equally, what was he saying? He goes, he goes, I've got qualifications, I've got this. What have you done? What have you got? What qualifications have you got? You I mean, so, no, him saying that, I'm like going to make more out of my life than he has out of his life. I'm going to make more out of my life than he has made out of his life. I'm going to go further in life than he is. And that's a fact. That is a fact. It's only Diane's first day, and he's already walking off the job. With the parents seeing everything tomorrow, Diane's outburst could ruin his chances in the competition. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, Danielle and Nikki's lack of attention to detail isn't doing them any favours with the manager either. Your hair. Yeah. Okay. 
Whatever you're doing, bed, always watch your own hair, ladies. It's the worst thing you can do is get a hair in the bed. What colour is it, my colour? What colour is it? It's probably mine. A blonde one. A blonde one. Yeah. Guilty, Danielle. Yeah. Hand towels? Where's the bath towels? I thought they were bath towels. That bath towel? That's a hand towel. Oh, that. Okay, so we need some bath towels. Okay. We'll have to look more clearly next time. The phone is not clean. You must look clean also. The, the phone. phone? Yeah. Look. Right, okay, we're moving to the second room. Yeah. So we're not, yes. doing, so we're not yeah. doing this room? Right? No, no, we're, we're you, running out of time. You must be stuck in one or two, yeah? Having given Doan time to calm down, the manager has decided to give him the opportunity to apologise for his behaviour. It did, it did get blown out of proportion mm -hmm. a little bit. I apologise for that. Um, Accepted. Thank you. Um, the yeah. only, the only, the only thing is, you know, um, I can see myself experienced enough and the um, and educated enough to do my job, and uh, therefore I will not accept being called you are no one or not being a manager. All right. No okay. Right. Yeah. Let's go and get you in shift away then, shall we? Right. Good. Go on. Let's get started. It's eight hours into a 12-hour day, and with two sets of tears and a blazing row behind them, the group desperately needs to raise its game. One hotel has a VIP cocktail party to handle, and in the other, a dinner for the hotel owner and his friends. They've limped through the day so far, so this is the last chance for the group to prove to their parents that they can cope with even one day's work. Rachel, Sean and Dina have been set to work in the kitchen, preparing canapes for tonight's 100 VIP guests. How are we doing guys? We've got two hours and we need all the food out. What are you making? I'm mm. peeling prawns, raw prawns. And Is that then, a fish? Yeah. Strictly speaking, not really, but probably best to just say oh. yes. Fish comes from the sea. Mm. Disgusting. Mm. Oh, she's such an attention seeking little beehive. And in the other hotel, Orin and Danielle will be waiting on their dinner guests. Now, couch potato Danielle isn't great with strangers. She spends most of her life at her mum's side, and the prospect of serving a table of VIP guests is sending her into a spin. I honestly can't do that. What, what's wrong? What can't I you can't. do? It's, there's only three starters and three, four mains. It's, it's not difficult to uh, just oh, I know, get what they order. It's just a matter of copying what they say onto a piece of paper and then putting it to the computer. Orion has given continuing support to Danielle all day, which is a million miles from his normal champagne swilling spenderholic existence. Even though his mum has conveniently set him up with his own flat, he's still clinging to her purse strings for dear life. My mum will be in shortly. Cause you're my mum pays for everything in my life. So, my, whatever I'm doing, holidays, um, anything that I do is, is, is all given to me from my mum's. Pocket. We do spend quite a lot of time together. It's usually when we need to have, need something, um, like shopping. We're going okay. here first, and then we'll go there later. Like. Oh. If Susan, he money mummy, um, wasn't around, I would be up <laughs> creek. <laughs> um, you could uh, maybe ask them if they want some <coughs> or sparkling water. Oh my god. Well, that's an easy one. You can get that. Would you like still or sparkling no, just water? Put it on the table. Well, no, you need to know what they want first. Just say when your hand went, bring the bread baskets and say, whilst you're looking through it, or just say, would you like any still or sparkling water? Well, to everyone. Oh, for Christ's sake. What about so pouring, bad, pouring a drink? No, my makeup's got to go funny. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Doan's finally back at work and determined to make amends for this morning's temper tantrum. You all right, Nicola? Yeah. Got it all sorted? Yeah, I'm sorted. Yeah, you ready for service? Do you have to say it like that because the stomach went? Yeah, I am. Yeah? Yeah. Got it covered, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Cool. Let's do it. In a last ditch attempt to cure Danielle's chronic shyness, a worried restaurant manager tries a bit of good old fashioned role play. Hi, what can I get for you? Um, to start with, I would like the homemade scotch egg. Do I write like home? Just put scotch egg down. Right. And, and I how can't is that? write like Good. Pardon? How is that, the scotch egg? Always say it's good. Always say it's good. Oh, it's <laughs> brilliant. It's really Fantastic. good today. Good. And then for my main course, scotch egg. I would like the lamb cutlets. Oh my god. Lamb? Cutlets, please. How do, I don't know how it's been cut. I don't know. Okay, okay, lamb. Lamb? Okay. Oh my god. That'd be great, thank you. I know what you like. 
Um, I'll have the soup of the day, but actually, can you tell me what that <laughs> is and what... I start laughing with you. Hang on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you want okay. Oh, yeah. For my right. main, can I you want the soup of the day? Um, yeah, for the main, because I'd also have the lamb cutlets. Um, what, so gonna, like, what is savoury rice pudding? Um, what do you mean? Risotto. Rice pudding? No, 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 it's not a rice pudding, it's a savoury rice <laughs> Please don't laugh, because I don't like it. Well, there you go. What could possibly go wrong? And across London, with the clock ticking, the pressure's on. Good. Well, we've got an hour. We need everything ready in an hour. Then we need your chains and ready outside. Start greeting the guests. Yeah. What in two? Clown's outfit. What? No, I'm joking. Um, so we just wear the same clothes? Yeah. In both hotels, the guests are finally arriving, and the group only have two hours left to really impress their parents. As well as helping to prepare the food, this part of the challenge will test if the group can really cut it under pressure and deal with a more discerning customer. Can I get you any water for your table? For the diva that is Dina, it's her chance to shine, but she hits the first hurdle with the canapes, which might as well be written in Swahili as far as she's concerned. Chicken liver pate served on Melba toast. Melba Melba. 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 Chicken, chicken liver ta pate. Chicken liver pate. No, pate. Pate. Chicken liver pate served on Melba toast. Chicken liver pate. Show the bottle. Yeah. Then unscrew the cap behind your back. Then pour a little bit and then just go around and like that. Don't hold it like that. You've got oh. hold it like a baby when you're going across, okay? Yeah. Okay, oh like my. a baby. Yeah. Okay. Just like a baby. Here we go. There you go. Oh. Meanwhile, Dina still can't remember what's on the tray. But right, I'll read the board. It's roast beef with a horseradish cream. Roast beef with a horseradish cream. I bet you may want to do it. Would you like one? No. Oh. What is it again? Roast beef. Yeah. Yeah. With a horseradish cream. Horseradish cream. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like a doctor water. Beef. With Dina, she seems to be playing up a little bit as if she doesn't know what roast beef is or horseradish cream. Whether she does or not, I don't know. Sorry? No, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. I have to. I forgot what it is though. Baby asparagus wrapped in panketta. Watch it. Say streaky bacon. It's wrapped in streaky, streaky bacon. bacon. Yeah. Yep, okay. okay. Baby asparagus wrapped yeah. in streaky yeah. bacon. Yeah. Oh no. This is very important now. Yeah. You must go into the kitchen and tell the mains away, which means they're going to start cooking the main course because they finished their starter. So you go, chef, mains away on the party. Oh, it's really important. On the party? Like, on the party, that's the party. More than three people. Mains away. Mains away on the party, chef. Okay. <laughs> mains away on the party. <laughs> Thank you. <very> much. <laughs> Roast beef. No, thanks. Thank you. Danielle has almost overcome her nerves. That is until she actually has to take someone's order and write it down. I'm going to be difficult. Have you got any fresh fruit? No. Fresh fruit. Yeah, fresh fruit. Have you got any fresh fruit? Yeah, we can get some fresh fruit. Yeah, we can get some fresh fruit. Taking an off-menu order without consulting the chef is a risky move. Um, this is what they want for their desserts, but they want fresh fruit as well. Is that all right? Well, it is now. Well, what do you mean it is now? Ask me before no. you take an order. Yeah, but no, they said that it was fine. Who said it was fine? Like, they said it was fine to say, yeah. You have to ask me before you take an order, because I might not Yeah, but I said, I said, is that all right? And they said, yeah. But they're not making it. If we don't have that, for example, ask me. come in. I'm the one oh that's sending the food here. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, I'm I just didn't know. Too late, what right. do you mean, sorry, it's too late? I said, sorry. Oh, my God. Chef isn't happy. One little telling off and tantrum queen Danielle has gone back to doing what she knows best. Oh my god! Leaving Orion to handle the guests alone. I hate this hotel. I'd be able to let anyone stay in it though, I knew. Oh, he's made me so angry. I just want to pour soup all over his head. I never get upset about anything, I just get mad. 
that it's like earlier you asked something one thing in this hotel and the rest say the next with only minutes to go before the end of the working day danielle desperately needs to get a grip or risk being eliminated by her mum and the other parents I feel, I feel like i won't oh, another cry. Don't be silly. come on girl he's a you're all right my dad would knock him out <laughs> he would Oh, well done, cheers. He would knock him clean. And my brother. The shock of a full day's work is really sinking in. 15 hour shift. We've worked a 15 hour shift. If we had to get up at five, I could not do that every day. Yeah. The fact that I've been up 34 hours and I still managed to get off my ass and do something for 12 hours. Done good. Well done. Yeah. So, two walkouts, three sets of tears, a blazing row and countless mistakes later, to the amazement of the managers, the groups have battled their way through their first proper day's work. From my point of view, I'm very proud of you guys. I think you've actually done really, really well. I think you've shown that you can do a really hard day's work. You should be really proud of yourselves. And, uh, yeah, well done. You can now relax. You wash back the uniforms. And take your shoes, shoes off. off. And go and have a nice hot bath. Oh, yeah. thank God. Not together. Well, okay, yeah. Why not? Let's <laughs> start the night. Let's start the day. Well, everybody, congratulations. It's been a long day. You started when it was dark early this morning. You're now finishing when it's dark this evening. Can you tell me, where have you learned? I know that I don't necessarily want to be a hotelier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to slice bread, and I've learned that it's really hard to clean. <laughs> Hardly pearls of wisdom, but it's definitely a start for this lot. Overall, the hotel seems pleased with their efforts, but more importantly, what will their parents think? Back at home, most of the house decide to stay in and relax. Except for Rachel and Nikki, who are desperately feeling the need to let off some steam. Otherwise known as bitching. The reason I'm drinking, I can't handle that house. I can't handle the personalities. You know, they're just being so, they're not, I can't be me with them, you know? I, I just want to have a good time, time and they're not being, I can't yeah. let myself go. I just want to have a laugh. And they're being so like, oh, aren't they? Three hours later. Oh, hello! Hello, <laughs> hello Angel Cakes. Hi, who wants a drink? A drink? drink. Oh, oh. After a day of building tension and emotions running high, Rachel's ready to tell Dina what she really thinks of her. Well, we've had the best night here. It's been so fun. I'm joking. Yeah, but you are just sitting here, boy. It's so fun. I'm not going to have a good night. I'm serious, though. You're like, you're all sitting here. I had to come, but you didn't even invite me. I didn't invite anyone. We were just like, I wanted to go to the pub. I wanted to go to the pub. So did Figgy. I was like, do you want to go to the pub? Do you want to go to the pub? I didn't care. You're making such a serious self of nothing. Seriously, grow up. Grow up. Oh, my God. And that's where you want to get drunk. Well, I can say my true feelings. I don't need to be. Let's see, you've just embarrassed yourself. I'm not going to tell you about who the f. Everyone gets drunk. Everyone falls over. So, what's up? Come on, Angel! I'm not being funny, but all I said, she said, why didn't you come up with I said, didn't get an invite and just stop. Why are you showing? 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 Why
It's Judgment Day and time for the parents to witness their precious offspring experience their first day of coping as adults. In a nearby location, they must watch footage of yesterday's hotel challenge. The person who has performed the worst will be eliminated, losing the chance to win the prize of a round the world trip and, more importantly, the opportunity to earn their parents' respect. For some of them, it's eye opening viewing. I would never just be so rude and stuff. People who are trying their best. Rosalind's fears about her daughter Nikki's resistance to work are confirmed. Look at the state of me. I can't concentrate or anything. She's had 23 jobs. She doesn't stuck any of them. She gets sacked all the time. And looking at that, I now know why. With your yeah. attitude, you wouldn't, you wouldn't work for me, to be honest with you. You wouldn't work for me. Well, yeah, you wouldn't work if, for if my you, family. You would not work for my family have, business. If you're going to have your you company... You wouldn't work for my family business. If you're going to have your company, yeah, see call later, me. Bruv, later. Dude. Despite seeing her son at his worst, Dawn still defends his actions. He can be very outspoken, which he is, um, and I suppose that's my fault because I've well, always brought my kids up. that's not necessarily a bad yeah. thing, is it? Outspoken yeah. and say what you're actually thinking so people know where yeah. they stand. That's usually done, um, well. yeah. And for him to turn around and say, no, to me, your hotel's not clean because of this and because of that, I'm not knocking him for that. You're acting that way. Yeah. Um, what I think he needs to do is learn to take the constructive criticism, yeah. that uh, the feedback that the manager was giving him. Well, what's up? About that fruit thing. It's like earlier you asked something, one thing in this hotel, and the rest say the next, and he's a. Are you all right? My dad would knock him out. And for Danielle's mum, Lynn, witnessing her daughter's foul mouth on screen makes for excruciating viewing. On there, for me as a mum, to actually sit and see her, and I, and I know that she swears a lot, but actually to sit there and watch it on telly and other people with me watching it was quite difficult. It was quite hard, and I thought, oh my God, that, you know, I'm her mum, and this is, what, this is what's happening to her, this is what she's like, what, where have I gone wrong? You know, what, what is it with that? Oh, she's been spoiled. I've spoiled oh, they her. All, they all I hold obviously. my hands up. I have spoiled her rotten, so has everybody else. But I think we're all in that situation, yeah. aren't we? We've all and I don't want her to not, no disrespect to you at all, but I don't want her to end up down the road like your she daughter, 25, old, in, in the same situation. Absolutely. That, to me now, is her, yeah. I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, that yeah, can't, that yeah. Really. For the parents, seeing the kids' behaviour in action has been a real wake-up call as to just how responsible they themselves are for turning their kids into overprotected, spoilt brats. Nikki is just basically lazy and she needs to go kick up the backside. She's been wrapped up in cotton wool, she's been given what she's wanted um, and she's not had to do it. And I have to take the blame for that. It is my fault that Nikki's the way she is. The same for me and everybody else here, it is now come to a point where we have to sit mm. back and look at our children and turn around and say, do you know what, enough is mm. enough. Yeah. We need to you know, yeah. we'll you're going to get a job, yeah. you can stay at home, but you are going to learn to pull your yeah. way. That's why you've been in the house yeah. to learn. So after much discussion, the parents have decided the group consisting of Nikki, Danielle, Doan and Orion are all up for elimination from the competition. This week, the parents have decided to change the rules and get rid of the person they believe has the least to learn from staying in the house. I'm just trying to get my head around how would I choose because they're, you know, OK, um, Orion is... He comes across as confident and um, quite capable, um, whereas, whereas Nikki's coming across as my Danielle, um, probably... Not very capable at all um, to do anything. And then there's Doe, who looks oozing in confidence, but obviously has got issues and things that he needs to sort out himself. Um, so the parents don't waste any time making a case for their kids to stay in. I think um, I, I'm going to find this really difficult because I know that he came across as one that was, you know, quite capable of doing that. It's just that. He needs to focus and he, he, needs, he needs to have a purpose in life, getting up in the mornings and going out and actually doing a job of work um, because he just can't go on like this. And that, uh, all the time, at the back of his mind, he's always thinking, oh, mum's going to bail me out. 
Orion's a lovely lad, don't get me wrong, he is absolutely adorable. I would take him home with me tomorrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, I think um, Doe, Nikki and Danielle have got a longer road to travel yeah. down. Nikki, she's at that age now, she's okay. 25 years old she, and she needs to start to learn what real life is about. And she, But in order to do that, she needs to be given that opportunity. Dawn's got a long journey to take and a very hard one at that. And I think staying in the house and seeing all different aspects of what is to come um, will help him give him that confidence that he hasn't got. I would love her to stay in just purely because I think she, she's got some lessons to learn, some tough lessons to learn and he, you know, oh. so I want, I really want her to see that yes she can do it, that she can change her attitude as well. So they've all got different issues going on so it's going to be very hard, I honestly don't know how I'm going to come to a decision. After much discussion, the parents have finally made up their minds. They must now head to the house to deliver their verdict to the kids. Oh but who will be going home today and lose out on the prize of a round-the-world ticket and the chance to prove they're ready to become an adult? Will it be Nikki, Doan, Orion or Danielle? One of the reasons that we had to come to a decision is because obviously um, the way that you portrayed yourselves in the hotel some highs and some lows, but obviously the lows were obviously dove. You're kicking off with the manager. Now, had you had a decent night's sleep, Nicola, you might have been able to retain that information well, a little I know bit better. This. I know this, but I did the best of my best. I still give 110 percent. Right. Well, let, I want 120 percent. Um, obviously, the issues are. Language is one of them. Danielle, obviously you know that. You know that. Um, the swearing is, is hard to watch. The decision that we came to um, for the person that's leaving the house is we felt that they are more independent than the others and the person that's going home today is Orion. It's nearly time for the parents to leave their kids, but there's just time to sneak in one last bit of advice. Rosalind cuts straight to the chase. The start of your task when you worked as front of house, he couldn't remember the orders. And I think, were nervous. You know, I think it was because you didn't have any, enough sleep the night before. All right, you need to, if you're gonna work, Nikki, you need to get plenty of sleep the night before. <laughs> you did very well in the vote off. You only got one vote. Um, so the reason that the parents want to keep you in is because they think you've got a longer road to go and you've got a lot to learn. For Danielle, the realisation of just how much of a strain she's been for her mum is hitting home. I just feel really guilty because when, like, I feel as if, like... Don't feel guilty. I work really hard in that hotel and then <coughs> you do that as well as going home and cooking for the whole family and then there's me sat there going, can you get this, can you get that, can you get this? You have to do absolutely everything. And Dawn opts for the softly, softly approach with Doan. You're doing really well. You really are doing really well. Um, but you just need to, you know, obviously, the, the tasks that you're going to get over the next week or whatever weeks to come, um, you just need to try and keep a lid on your, on your temper. I know you're quite outspoken and you need to tell people, you know, the things that you see wrong in that situation. I fully understand you were totally 100% right, but to tell him that, he wasn't a manager of a hotel. <laughs> that was a lie, you know. Um, and you're doing well, and I'm really, really pleased. You've done better than I thought you would. And as Orion prepares to leave the house, he's taking his eviction in his stride. I think I, I think I always thought that I may be probably the more 
the person who has, I kind of have a bit, I'm a bit more worldly, I've got a bit more experience than a lot of people. So, you know, the person who's probably the least independent is Danielle. And Danielle has got the one to be, she's the one who needs to learn the most. Yes. And she's the one who could benefit most from the show. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Although the parents have opted to vote out the most capable person this week, from now on they'll have to stick to the rules and only keep the people who have worked hard and behaved like adults. It's time for the surviving kids to break the news of the parents' unexpected decision to the rest of the group, and they're in for a bit of a shock. What? That was not my boss! You're having a lot. No, wait, 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 you're actually having an absolute lot. Knows how to do it. Oh, oh, yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> is gone. Yeah, Orion is gone. Has he left already? Yeah. What? Nikki, Doan, and Danielle may have slipped through the net this week, but from now on, they're really going to have to raise their game. Next week, a lack of cleanliness in the house. Not for a million pounds, I would not touch that title. <laughs> leads to some drastic action. <laughs> Disgusting. Antisocial behaviour brings things to a head. You're nothing. You're a dirty animal. Pack your bags and get out. And the chance to prove themselves in the fashion industry pushes the kids to their creative limits. Shut up and listen. What do I think? They're an absolute disaster. Sales in the hotel. Some highs and some lows. But obviously the lows were obviously dove. You're kicking off with the manager. Now, had you had a decent night's sleep, Nicola, you might have been able to retain that information well, a little I know bit this. better. I know this, but I did to the best of my ability. I still give 110%. Right, well, let, I want 120%. Um, obviously, the issues are language is one of them. Danielle, obviously, you know that. You know that. Um, the swearing is, is hard to watch. The decision that we came to um, for the person that's leaving the house is we felt that they are more independent than the others and the person that's going home today is Orion. I told you. <laughs> Fuck it up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I thought you had to make baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Kay. You have them up. It's nearly time for the parents to leave their kids, but there's just time to sneak in one last bit of advice. Rosalind cuts straight to the chase. The start of your task, when you worked as front of house, you couldn't remember the orders and I think were nervous. You know, I think it was because you didn't have any, enough sleep the night before. All right, you need to if you're gonna work, Nikki, you need to get plenty of sleep the night before. You did very well in the vote off. You only got one vote. Um, so the reason that the parents want to keep you in is because they think you've got a longer road to go and you've got a lot to learn. For Danielle, the realisation of just how much of a strain she's been for her mum is hitting home. I just feel really guilty because when, like, I feel as if, like... Don't feel guilty. I work really hard to. in that hotel yeah. and <coughs> you do that as well as going home and cooking for the whole family and then there's me sat there going, can you get this, can you get that, can you get this? You have to absolutely everything. And Dawn opts for the softly, softly approach with Doan. You're doing really well. You really are doing really well. Um, but you just need to, you know, obviously, the, the tasks that you're going to get over the next week or whatever weeks to come, um, you just need to try and keep a lid on your, on your temper. I know you're quite outspoken and you need to tell people, you know, the things that you see wrong in that situation. I fully understand you were totally 100% right, but to tell him that, he wasn't a manager of a hotel. <laughs> that was a lie. Oh, fish comes from the sea. Disgusting. Oh, she's such an attention seeker beehive. And in the other hotel, Orion and Danielle will be waiting on their dinner guests. Now, couch potato Danielle isn't great with strangers. 
She spends most of her life at her mum's side, and the prospect of serving a table of VIP guests is sending her into a spin. I honestly can't do that. What, what's wrong? What can't I you can't. do? It's, there's only three starters and three, four mains. It's, it's not difficult to uh, just oh, forget know, what they I order. Can't. It's just a matter of copying what they say onto a piece of paper and then putting it to the computer. Orion has given continuing support to Danielle all day, which is a million miles from his normal champagne swilling spendaholic existence. Even though his mum has conveniently set him up with his own flat, he's still clinging to her purse strings for dear life. My mum will be in shortly. Cause you're my mum pays for everything in my life. So, my, whatever I'm doing, holidays, um, anything that I do is, is, is all given to me from my mum's. Pocket. We do spend quite a lot of time together. It's usually when we need to have, need something, um, like shopping. We're okay. going here first, and then we'll go there. Like, right. if Susan, e.g., mummy, um, wasn't around, I would be up <laughs> creek. <laughs> um, you could uh, maybe ask them if they want salt <coughs> or sparkling water. Oh my god! Well, that's an easy one. You can get that. Would you like still or sparkling water? Put it on the table. Well, no, you need to know what they want first. Just say when your hand went, bring the bread baskets and say whilst you're looking through, or just say, would you like any still or sparkling water? Well, to everyone. Oh, for Christ's sake! What about sake, pouring, Daniel? pouring a drink? No, my makeup's got to go for me. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Doan's finally back at work and determined to make amends for this morning's temper tantrum. You all right, Nicola? Yeah. Got it all sorted? Yeah, I'm sorted. Yeah, you ready for service? Do you have to say it like that because the more went? Yeah, I am. Yeah? Yeah. Got it covered, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Sure. Let's do it. In a last ditch attempt to cure Danielle's chronic shyness, a worried restaurant manager tries a bit of good old fashioned role play. Hi, what can I get for you? Um, to start with, I would like the homemade scotch egg. So do I write like home? Just put scotch egg in. Right. And, and how I can't is that? write like Good. Pardon? How is that, the scotch egg? Always say it's good. Always say it's good. <laughs> oh, it's Always brilliant. brilliant. It's really Absolutely. good today. Good. And then for my main course. Scotch egg. I would like the lamb cutlets. Oh my god. Lamb? Cutlets, please. How do, I don't know how to make cutlets. I don't know. Okay, lamb. Okay. Lamb. lamb. Okay. Oh my god. That'd be great, thank you. I know what you like. Um, I have the soup of the day, but actually make itself. So it's time for a rare outing to the local supermarket. And when you're living on a limited budget for the first time ever, best to stick to the essentials. No, I thought it was going to miss important things. I got a bottle of wine and that just to start. I don't know if people like wine, but I got them that. Yeah, I've got yogurts, um, rice pudding, water. I'm getting a plug in to make my room smell nice. What I've done is I've bought two bottles of port. Anyone like to join me drinking port they can. If they won't, that means I've got enough port to last me a whole week. So that's a well-balanced diet of eight yogurts, two bottles of wine, a bottle of vodka, and two bottles of port. Not forgetting that thing that makes Dina's room smell like roses. Thank you. Back from their epic outing to the corner shop, tantrum queen Danielle's already feeling the strain of life without her live-in slave, her mum. It was absolutely horrible. <laughs> And I'm really tired and I feel ill now. It's really stressful and I don't know how my mum does it. And for Spendaholic Orion, shopping on a weekly budget of £85 has been a shock to the system. Oh, having to like go into a shop, I mean, I would just spend £85 in one, get in one go. So it's just, that's just having to go into a shop and then buying, buying the cheapest wine and stuff. At like two pounds fifty, but at least Orion's better equipped than some to cope with the basics. Eighteen-year-old Danielle has never cooked for herself, ever. But even for the most hardened layabout, surely heating up a can of beans shouldn't be that difficult, should it? You get a pan, make sure your pan's clean. That is clean. That's just a watermark. Mm -hmm. It's like each one of these with the black one. So that one is that one. That one. You see the dot is that one. And you press it down. So do it for me. Twist, press down, and twist. Twist, no, twist. Right, it's done. No, no, back again. Mm -hmm. So you've got a bit more heat. Mm -hmm. Put the pan on there. Give me a fork. Mm -hmm. 
And then in about three minutes, it'll be piping hot. Like Somebody call Mensa. I think we've got a new member. Stupid shower. But it's not just Danielle struggling with the basics. It's not long before Daddy's girl, Dina, is faced with the next obstacle. We've run out of hot water, Sean. How is that possible? I don't even know. Hot water, it lives forever. What? I know. What is this thing? <laughs> it lives forever. You are cold in. Well, I can't go in the bath upstairs or something. But it's cold as well. What is freezing? What, upstairs? I don't understand how hot water works then. Like, what makes it hot? <laughs> I just know there's a boiler because heat rises and all that. But then again, we've got one in our airing. We've got like a water tank in our airing cabin that's upstairs, but... And more. <laughs> and finally, heir to a nightclub empire, Doan lives a champagne lifestyle at his parents' expense. I could imagine people come and live in my life. It's, it's like a dream. He's had everything that he wants when he's wanted it. Some people look at it as spoiling the kids, but it's not spoiling, it's just giving their kids what they, what they want. It's day one of four weeks of communal living for the group and time to meet their new housemates. So that's eight pampered people under one roof who've barely lifted a finger in their entire lives let alone cooked, washed, or cleaned for themselves. Should we bring your stuff? Yeah, let's give us yes. this one. Thank you. It looks like old-fashioned and cold. I'm sure my room's haunted. You a bit hot in here, Sean? I'm stuck. Should have his instructions. Look, I've made my bed. I've made my bed. Whoa, with all that back-breaking work over, it's time for dinner, which certainly isn't going to make itself. So it's time for a rare outing to the local supermarket. And when you're living on a limited budget for the first time ever, best to stick to the essentials. No, I've got to get the most important things. I got a bottle of wine and that just to start. I don't know if people like wine, but I got them that. Yeah, I've got yogurts, um, rice pudding, water. I'm getting a plug in to make my room smell nice. What I've done is I've bought two bottles of port. Anyone like to join me drinking what they can? If they won't, that means I've got enough port to last me a whole week. So that's a well-balanced diet of eight yogurts, two bottles of wine, a bottle of vodka, and two bottles of port. Not forgetting that thing that makes Dina's room smell like roses. Thank you. Back from their epic outing to the corner shop, tantrum queen Danielle's already feeling the strain of life without her live-in slave, her mum. It was absolutely horrible. And I'm really tired. And I feel ill now. It's really stressful and... I don't know how my mum does it. And for spendaholic Orion, shopping on a weekly budget of £85 has been a shock to the system. Oh, having to, like, go into a shop, I mean, I would just spend £85 in one, in one go. So it's, it's, just, it's just having to go into a shop and then buying, buying the cheapest wine and stuff at, like, £2.50. But at least Orion's better equipped than some to cope with the basics. 18-year-old Danielle has never cooked for herself. Ever. But even for the most hardened layabout, surely heating up a can of beans shouldn't be that difficult. Should it? You get a pan, make sure your pan's clean. That is clean, that's just a watermark. Mm -hmm. It's like each one of these with the black one. So that one is that one. That one makes for excruciating viewing. On there, for me as a mum, to actually sit and see her, and I, and I know that she swears a lot, but actually to sit there and watch it on telly and other people with me watching it was quite difficult. It was mm. quite hard, and I thought, oh, my God, that, you know, I'm her mum, and this is, what, this is what's happening to her. This is what she's like. What, where have I gone wrong? You know, what, what is it with her? Oh, well, she's been spoiled. I've spoiled they her. All, they all I hold obviously. my hands up. I have spoiled her rotten, so has everybody else. But I think we're, we're all in that situation, yeah. aren't we? We've all and I don't want her to not, no disrespect to you at all, but I don't want her to end up down the road like your she daughter, 25, in the same situation. Absolutely. That, to me, now is her. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, that yeah, can't, that yeah. Work. For the parents, seeing the kids' behaviour in action has been a real wake-up call as to just how responsible they themselves are for turning their kids into overprotected, spoilt brats. Nikki is just basically lazy and she needs to go kick up the backside. She's been wrapped up in cotton wool, she's been given what she's wanted um, and she's not had to do it. And I have to take the blame for that. It is my fault that Nikki's the way she is. The same for me 
and everybody else here, it has now come to a point where we have to sit mm. back and look at our children and turn around and say, do you know what? Enough is mm. enough. Yeah. We need to you know, yeah. you you're going to get a job. Yeah. You can stay at home, but you are going to learn to pull your yeah. weight. That's why you've been in that house yeah. to learn. So after much discussion, the parents have decided the group consisting of Nikki, Danielle, Doan and Orion are all up for elimination from the competition. This week, the parents have decided to change the rules and get rid of the person they believe has the least to learn from staying in the house. I'm just trying to get my head around how would I choose because they're, you know, OK, um, Orion is, he comes across as confident and um, quite capable, um, whereas, whereas Nikki's coming across as my Danielle, um, probably not very capable at all um, to do anything. And then there's Doe, who looks oozing in confidence, but obviously has got issues and things that he needs to sort out himself. Um, so the parents don't waste any time making a case for their kids to stay in. I think um, I, I'm going to find this really difficult because I know that he came across as one that was, you know, quite capable of doing that. It's just that. He needs to focus and he, he, needs, he needs to have a purpose in life, getting up in the mornings and going out and actually doing a job of work um, because he just can't go on like this. And that, uh, all the time, at the back of his mind, he's always thinking, oh, Mum's going to bail me out. I mean, he's a lovely lad, don't get me wrong, he is absolutely adorable, I would. Dina, she seems to be playing up a little bit as if she doesn't know what roast beef is or horseradish cream, whether she does or not, I don't know. Sorry? No, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. I have to. I forgot what it is, though. Baby asparagus wrapped in panketta. Watch it. Say streaky bacon. It's wrapped in streaky, streaky bacon. bacon. Yeah. Yep, OK. okay. Baby asparagus wrapped yeah. in streaky so bacon. Yeah. Oh, no. This is very important now. Yeah. You must go into the kitchen and tell the mains away, which means they're going to start cooking their main course because they finished their starters now. So you go, chef, mains away on the party. Oh, it's really important. on the party? Otherwise, on the party, that's the party. More than three people mains the party. Mains away on the party, chef. OK. <laughs> uh, mains away on the party. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Roast beef. No, thanks. Thank you. Danielle has almost overcome her nerves. That is until she actually has to take someone's order and write it down. I'm going to be difficult. Have you got any fresh fruit? No. Fresh fruit. Yeah, fresh fruit. Have you got any fresh fruit? Yeah, we get some. Yeah, we can get some fresh yeah, fruit. Yeah. Taking an off-menu order without consulting the chef is a risky move. Um, this is what they want for their desserts, but they want fresh fruit as well. Is that all right? Well, it is now. Well, what do you mean it is now? Not Ask me before no. you take an order. Yeah, yeah, but no, they said that it was fine. Who said it was fine? Like, they said it was fine to say, yeah. You have to ask me before you take an order, because I might not Yeah, but I said, I said, is that all right? And they said, yeah. But they're not making it. We don't have that, for example. Ask me. Come in. I'm the one oh that's sending the food. Oh my god. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Yeah, I'm I just sorry, didn't know. What do you mean, sorry, it's too late? I said sorry. Oh my god. Chef isn't happy. One little telling off, and tantrum queen Danielle has gone back to doing what she knows best. Oh my god. Leaving Orion to handle the guests alone. <sighs> I hate this hotel. I'd be able to let anyone stay in it that I knew. Oh, he's made me so angry. I just want to pour soup all over his head. I never get upset about anything, I just get mad. But it's like earlier, you asked something, one thing in this hotel, and the rest say the next. With only minutes to go before the end of the working day, Danielle desperately needs to get a grip or risk being eliminated by her mum and the other parents. But I, feel, I feel like I won't. Oh, I'd be feeling Come on, girl. He's a f***ing f***. Are you alright? My dad would knock him out. <laughs> he would. Oh, well done. Cheers. He would knock him clean. And my brother. The shock of a full day's work is real. I think um, Doe, Nikki and Danielle have got a longer road to travel yeah. down. Nikki, she's at that age now. She's 25 years old she, and she needs to start to learn 
what real life is about. And she, but in order to do that, she needs to be given that opportunity. Dawn's got a long journey to take and a very hard one at that. And I think staying in the house and seeing all different aspects of what is to come um, will help him give him that confidence that he hasn't got. I would love her to stay in just purely because I think she, she's she got some lessons to learn, some tough lessons to learn. And, he, you know, oh, so I want, I really want her to see that, yes, she can do it, that she can change her attitude as well. So they've all got different issues going on, so it's going to be very hard. I honestly don't know how I'm going to come to a decision. After much discussion, the parents have finally made up their minds. They must now head to the house to deliver their verdict to the kids. Oh but who will be going home today and lose out on the prize of a round-the-world ticket and the chance to prove they're ready to become an adult? Will it be Nikki, Doan, Orion or Danielle? One of the reasons that we had to come to a decision is because obviously um, the way that you portrayed yourselves in the hotel some highs and some lows, but obviously the lows were obviously Dove, you kicking off with the manager. Now, had you had a decent night's sleep, Nicola, you might have been able to retain that information well, a little I know bit this, better. I know this, but I did, did the best of my business. I still give 110%. Right, well, let, I want 120%. Um, obviously, the issues are language is one of them. Danielle, obviously, you know that. You know that. Um, the swearing is, is hard to watch. The decision that we came to um, for the person that's leaving the house is we felt that they are more independent than the others and the person that's going home today is Orion. I told you. <laughs> Fuck it up, mate. <laughs> oh, I thought you had to make baked beans. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, oh. Kate. You had them up. <laughs> It's nearly time for the parents to leave their kids, but there's just time to sneak in one last bit of advice. Rosalind cuts straight to the chase. The start of your task, when you worked as front of house, you couldn't remember the orders. And I think- you were nervous. You know, I think it was because you didn't have any- in Sure. I'm stuck. You should have instructions. Look, I'd make my bed. I'll make my bed. Whoa, with all that back-breaking work over, it's time for dinner, which certainly isn't going to make itself. So it's time for a rare outing to the local supermarket. And when you're living on a limited budget for the first time ever, best to stick to the essentials. No, I thought it was going to miss important things. I got a bottle of wine and that just to start. I don't know if people like wine, but I got them that. Yeah, I've got yogurts, um, rice pudding. Water. I'm getting a plug in to make my room smell nice. What I've done is I've bought two bottles of port. Anyone like to join me drinking port they can. If they won't, that means I've got enough port to last me a whole week. So that's a well balanced diet of eight yogurts, two bottles of wine, a bottle of vodka, and two bottles of port. Not forgetting that thing that makes Dina's room smell like roses. Thank you. Back from their epic outing to the corner shop, Tantrum Queen Danielle's already feeling the strain of life without her live in slave, her mum. It was absolutely horrible, and I'm really tired, and I feel ill now. It's really stressful, and I don't know how my mum does it. And for Spendaholic Orion, shopping on a weekly budget of £85 has been a shock to the system. Oh, having to, like, go into a shop, I mean, I would just spend £85 in one go, in one go. so it's just, it's just having to go into a shop and then buying, buying the cheapest wine and stuff, at like £2.50. But at least Orion's better equipped than some to cope with the basics. 18-year-old Danielle has never cooked for herself, ever. But even for the most hardened layabout, surely heating up a can of beans shouldn't be that difficult, should it? You get a pan, make sure your pan's clean. That is clean, that's just a watermark. Mm -hmm. It's like each one of these with the black one. So that one is that one. That one, you see the dot, is that one. And you press it down. So do it for me. Twist, press down and twist. Twist, no, twist. 
Right, it's done. No, no, back again. Mm -hmm. So you've got a bit more heat. Mm -hmm. Put the pan on there. Give me a fork. And then in about three minutes, it'll be piping hot. Um, like Somebody call Mensa. I think we've got a new member. Stupid shower. But it's not just Danielle struggling with the basics. It's not long before Daddy's girl, Dina, is faced with the next obstacle. We've run out of hot water, Sean. How is that possible? I don't even know. Hot water, it lives forever. What? <laughs> what is this thing? <laughs> it lives forever. Do you know how cold it is? Well, I can't go in the bath upstairs or something. But it's cold as well. The water's freezing. What, upstairs? I don't understand how hot water works then. It's Always disgusting. say it's good. <laughs> It's Always brilliant. It's really Perfect. good today. Good. And then for my main course, Squid egg. I would like the lamb cutlets. Oh my god. Lamb? Cutlets, please. How do, I don't know how to make cutlets. I don't know. Is that okay, it? lamb. Fine. Lamb? Okay. Oh my god. That'd be great, thank you. Anna, what do you like? <laughs> um, I'll have the soup of the day, but actually, can you tell me what that <laughs> is? I'm still in love with you. Hang on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you want okay. it. Oh yeah, my right. main, can I you want the soup of the day? Um, yeah, for the main because I would also have the lamb cutlets. Um, what's I'm gonna like... What is savoury rice pudding? Um, what do you want? Risotto. Rice pudding? No, 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 <laughs> it's not a rice pudding. It's a savoury rice, <laughs> which is like a risotto. Please don't laugh because I don't like it. <laughs> well, there you go. What could possibly go wrong? And across London, with the clock ticking, the pressure's on. Good. Well, we've got an hour. We need everything ready in an hour. Then we need you changed and ready outside. Start greeting Change. the guests. Yeah. What in two? Clown's outfit. What? No, I'm joking. Yeah. Um, so we just wear the same clothes? Yeah. In both hotels, the guests are finally arriving, and the group only have two hours left to really impress their parents. As well as helping to prepare the food, this part of the challenge will test if the group can really cut it under pressure and deal with a more discerning customer. Can I get you any water for your table? For the diva that is Dina, it's her chance to shine, but she hits the first hurdle with the canapes, which might as well be written in Swahili as far as she's concerned. Chicken liver pate served on Melba toast. Melba pate. Served on Melba toast. Melba. 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 Chicken liver pate. Chicken liver pate. Pate. Chicken liver pate served on Melba toast. Chicken liver pate. Show the bottle. Yeah. Then unscrew the cap behind your back. Then pour a little bit and then just go around and like that. Don't hold it like that. You've got oh. hold it like a baby when you're going across, okay? Yeah. Okay, oh like my. a baby. Yeah. Okay. Just like a baby. Here we go. There you go. Oh. Meanwhile, Dina still can't remember what's on the tray. But right, I'll read the board. It's roast beef with a horseradish cream. Roast beef with a horseradish cream. I bet you may want to do it. Would you like one? No. Oh. What is it again? Roast beef. Yeah. Yeah. With a horseradish cream. Horseradish cream. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like a doctor water. Beef. With Dina, she seems to be playing up a little bit, as if she doesn't know what roast beef is or water. <laughs> Hello, angel cakes. Hi. Who wants a drink? A drink. Drink. Oh, God. After a day of building tension and emotions running high, Rachel's ready to tell Dina what she really thinks of her. Yeah, we met some amazing people. Well, we've had the best night here. It's been so fun. I'm joking. Yeah, but you know what? Just see you, boy. It's so fun. I'm serious, though. You're like, you're awesome. I'm like, at home. I'm just calm, but you didn't even invite me. I didn't invite anyone. We were just like, I wanted to go to the pub. I wanted to go to the pub. So just thinking, I was like, do you want to go to the pub? Do you want to go to the pub? I didn't care. You're making such a serious self of nothing. Seriously, grow up. Yeah, grow up. Oh my god. <laughs> when you try your true feelings come out, and that's where you want to get drunk. Well, I can say my true feelings. I don't need to be. Let's see, you've just embarrassed yourself. Oh, oh, I'm not a Funny, but all I said, she 
He said, why didn't you come up with why I said didn't get an invite and just stop? Why are you showing? 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 Why are you And the parents may not look too favourably on Rachel and Dina's outburst. Everyone knows, well, me, Rachel and Dina know how we feel about each other now. Me and Rachel don't like Dina, and Dina don't like me and Rachel. I think it's all out in the open, so maybe we could move on. I shouldn't have shouted m- more and like raised my voice on Facebook. I couldn't help it. I was sticking up for myself. She was patronising me. She's only a year old, and we've got to say there's no need for that at all. There's no need for the argument at all. It's just so pathetic. Like my parents say, you can't try and rise above it, and that's what I'm going to do now and just get on with it and talk to the others and hopefully try and find some common ground. Try. It's judgment day, and time for the parents to witness their precious offspring experience their first day of coping as adults. In a nearby location, they must watch footage of yesterday's hotel challenge. The person who has performed the worst will be eliminated, losing the chance to win the prize of a round-the-world trip, and more importantly, the opportunity to earn their parents' respect. For some of them, it's eye-opening viewing. I would never just be so rude and stuff. People who are trying their best. Rosalind's fears about her daughter Nikki's resistance to work are confirmed. Fine then, bed sheets. He's sent to the laundry. Do you like making beds? How many beds do you make a day? <sighs> she's like your slave. She's not. She's not a slave. I think that was the wrong word you used. No. Yes. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. She like just like I do it, I do it. With pressure building and only half an hour's sleep, Dina's total lack of respect for the other hotel workers pushes Rachel over the edge. I just think she's respectful. What she says, she and I think I don't think she realizes it. I would never just be so rude and stuff. People who are trying their best. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I just like oh, just go watch me for a bit and. Right. Right. What's the matter? Just everything just got on top of me, and I just been so intense recently, and that's why. So right, come on, let's make beds. Meanwhile, across London at the other hotel, Nikki's still trying to get her head round this messy business called work. I just don't know how people like to work in a hotel. It's beyond me. Hello. And finally, after her first four hours of really hard graft, the penny's beginning to drop. I think I don't understand the concept of hard work or a job. I, I didn't think jobs should be this difficult. I thought it was like a nine to five going. That was it, and that bored me. Now I didn't know how much skill is involved and how good you have to be at your job to keep your job. But it's still all a bit new for some. Hey, there's a Johnny in the bed. That's disgusting. <laughs> I'm not disgusting. there. That is disgusting. That's that's disgusting. That's I need that. Yeah, you need to actually you need to move it. The rooms should normally take one person half an hour to make up. It takes the groups twice that time with two people. It's time for the hotel managers to inspect their handiwork. So, how, how did you get on? Um, I've, we've checked our list. Yeah, we've just done with the checklist. I think it looks good. Val. Yeah. Is this do they on? No, it's not very good, is it? It's not even tucked in. Right. Um, your mirrors are very smeary. You didn't clean your kettle, but your tray, you filled it up as best you could. Not brilliant, but not too bad. Thank you. <coughs> right, that's it. Let's let's go. Okay. Back in the other hotel. She's not. She's not a slave. I think that was the wrong word you used. No. Yes. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
She like just like I'll do it, I'll do it. With pressure building and only half an hour's sleep, Dina's total lack of respect for the other hotel workers pushes Rachel over the edge. <sighs> she's respectful, what she says. She I'm not, I think I don't think she realizes it. I would never just be so rude and stuff. People who were trying their best. Oh, sorry about that. I just like, oh, it just caught me for a bit. And... Okay. All right. Right. Well, you need a cast. What's the matter? Just everything just got off me, and I just all been so intense recently, and that's why. And... So right, come on, let's make beds. Meanwhile, across London at the other hotel, Nikki's still trying to get her head round this messy business called work. I just don't know how people don't like to work in a hotel. It's beyond me. Hello. And finally, after her first four hours of really hard graft, the penny's beginning to drop. I think I don't understand the concept of hard work or a job. I, I didn't think jobs should be this difficult. I thought it was like a nine to five going, that was it. And that bored me. Now I didn't know how much skill is involved and how good you have to be at your job to keep your job. But it's still all a bit new for some. Hey, there's a Johnny in the bed, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'm not The rooms should normally take one person half an hour to make up. It takes the groups twice that time with two people. It's time for the hotel managers to inspect their handiwork. So, how, how did you get on? Um, I've, we've checked our list. You've just done with the checklist. I think it looks good. Val? Yeah? Is this duvet on? No, it's not very good, is it? It's not even tucked in. Right, um, your mirrors are very smeary. You didn't clean your kettle, but your tray, you filled it up as best you could. Not brilliant, but not too bad. Thank you. <coughs> right, that's it. Let's let's go. Okay. Back in the other hotel, Orion and Doan haven't finished, but are convinced they're not to blame. Well, um, well we're kind of pretty much done after we've done the bed because as um, the hotel um, has. With half an hour sleep under her belt, work shy Nikki's powers of concentration are already running on empty. Three number on there. Table three. I've just made like a mistake already. But which wasn't my fault because I just got told to take it to the table. I only thought there was one person in there, so obviously. Give me time, I've been doing it five minutes. You can't expect me to know it all straight away. I'm not bloody a genius. Nope, no one's gonna accuse you of that. It's no surprise that she's struggling. Work and Nikki have never been much of a match. All in all, I've had 23 jobs, and they've lasted like three days, sometimes a day, sometimes six hours. They depress my jobs, they depress me. They make me in tears. I don't like, I hate, I don't like working. Clean it up. I'm not. Clean it, Nikki, just give me them. Would you not like to be able to to have your own place yeah, and that's, do your own thing? That, and, that is too much thinking, Mum. There's too many decisions. I'm not, I don't want but to you wouldn't have me there to nag you all the time. I'd rather have be nagged the work. Are you just lazy? <laughs> but it's not just Nikki having problems. Only 45 minutes into the job and it's total chaos all round. No, no. <laughs> Whoa! There's a sink over there. Quick, 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 quick. Well, who do I give these to, Jay? Put them on the table. On the table. Come on, it's only a chicken. I'm not strong enough. <laughs> Got any problems or queries? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever, have you ever done eggs before? Any? Like yeah, and you just smack them and they crack. Whoa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd like to order a uh, smoking salmon bagel, what and uh, also can I have bottles of water with 
appliance and uh, ice, please. Mom to ask what? Yeah, it's bottle of sealed water. Sealed water. Like sealed water with sealed water. some ice, please. Yes. Thank you. Oh, I forgot what he said. Was it a smoked salmon bagel? Yes, please. Yes. Anyone's? <coughs> seed water. A what? Seed water, he said. Seed water? Yeah, that's what he said. No. I asked him four times. It's seed water with ice and lemon. Yes, that well-known drink, seed water. I would like to order a bottle of steel water, please. Steel. Steel, steel water. Steel water. Yep, got it. Thanks. I'm so stressed. Emotionally. And things are only about